Hey guys, it's Kevin from Trag Geeks. We're with, back with Chris Derrick. He's going to go over a new product here with Sitka for 2019. Yeah, so new in our uh, TTW line, uh, Train Travel Work line, is the Grindstone Jacket. It's a windstopper with Prima Loft. Really great durable piece. And then under this is our new hanger system. So this is really designed for whitetail hunters that are hanging tree stands in the summertime. Yeah. So there's a Henley that goes along with that. Really lightweight, long sleeves actually on purpose because of uh, uh, coverage from insects. So both of the hanger Henley and the pant, uh, hanger pant have insect shields. So that's gonna help stop those ticks and chiggers that always are the worst pain around your hem lines along your ankles um, and then the hanger pant is designed with uh, cordura overlay uh, panels on the front leg um, it does have a two-way fly so if you're using safety harnesses you can still take that on and off uh, cordura line pockets that are big enough for holding tree stands or tree steps and then on the the right side you're going to see a pocket that's specifically designed for holding a saw and then you'll see another pocket that's designed for holding a knife. So really simple system, a lot of stretch and mobility for climbing tree, uh, tree steps, and, um, and it, it's just a great pant for uh, setting your stands in the summertime. Absolutely, Pennsylvania's terrible. And yes. That's where we're from, poor ticks. And there's a lot of guys that don't even want to go in the woods anymore because the ticks are so bad and Lyme disease yeah. popping up so much. So and once again, you guys are ahead of the game. So that's awesome. Sitka has a new fanatic system for 2019. Chris and James are going to talk about that a little bit. When we introduced the new Fanatic, we obviously wanted to make it a lot quieter, uh, but we also want to change some of the feature sets on this as well. So in addition to the new Berber that we have that's got better print clarity, we also want to redesign the front pocket configuration. So the old one had a grunt tube holder that went right here. That's actually inside the pocket and shifted over further to the right. Um, so, and then your rangefinder can go inside there as well. But now it's out of the way if you don't want it there, and it's there if you do want it. Um, another uh, feature that you're going to see on uh, some of these jackets too is like the hand muff. If you reach inside there, there's actually a place to hold your chemical hand warmer. If you've ever ripped uh, your hand out and then you sent your uh, chemical hand warmer flying down to the bottom of the tree stand, yep. now it'll hold that inside of there as well. Um, you'll see this is now optifade up here, so total concealment, and there'll be a magnet that's on the side that holds this collar in place. It's not right on this, this is a prototype, but uh, much better hold than what's on side of here way quieter zippers and then you'll see a map design so this is actually a lefty jacket mm -hmm. so on this side of you is a right so you'll see like on this side if i'm holding my bow with my on the grip with my right hand and i'm a lefty shooter there's no berber on the inside of my sleeve um, and then on the draw arm with on the side that i'm drawing there's no berber on the inside of here and that's for reduced bulk when you're at full draw and then everything flips to the other side for righty or a lefty um, the other feature I want to show you too, if you don't mind grabbing that jacket right behind you and just handing it to me. This is one of the features I'm most excited about. Um, so if you ever wanted to don or doff a jacket, you technically, in order to stay connected to the tree stand, you're supposed to throw your lineman's rope around. Um, I know some guys probably cut the corners uh, when they do that. Um, and so what this allows you to do is be able to put that jacket on or off without disconnecting from the tree stand. So the back of the collar breaks apart. It's a slide the lock snap. You'll see like a, a little drop pin. It goes in and then slides over and locks in place. So it won't just come off if you pull it and then release it, you do this. So you're putting on your jacket, you just snap it around the back or reach around the tree, hook it around your tether. And now you're never disconnected from the tree stand. So that's a new feature on there as well. Um, Burrs uh, were uh, an issue sometimes picking up inside Berber. Um, so uh, you'll see along the hem here and along the front of the legs, no burr pickup, or if it does pick up burrs, they're easy to flick off. Yeah. Um, so that's really, there's a jacket, left, right, bib, and vest. And then uh, the last bit of the system is the Fanatic Pack. So this thing's built without structure, by purpose, on purpose, uh, and that's so when you take everything off of it, it just caves in on itself inside of the tree stand. There's no buckles to make any noise. So if you look right here, this is kind of like a molly system. You just tuck it back through. Now there's no buckle when you're using that. Front lid's the same way. And then if you're carrying your bow on the front and you have a stabilizer, you run the stabilizer through here. Or if you're running a muzzle loader, it just goes through in your optics right here. 
use your silent wings to close that. And then on top of here is a tether that comes out of an area, goes around your riser, pulls the bow back up to the top of, so that way it doesn't tilt away from your body. But you can see like, I mean, this thing is, really yeah. carries the load well. So, uh, and you can put antler bases inside of the, these ports right here. Nice. So now you can nest your, your antlers on the front of the pack instead of a bow. So whatever you want to do, you'll find the right system that works for you. But uh, that's, that's the idea behind the Fanatic uh, pack. So, that's great. And how, when it when you have everything out of it, does it suck down pretty good when it's on yep. the tree? You know, because like I noticed the tool buckets, you know, they're more firm. This yep. one will suck down, give you more room probably. There is, yeah, there's no structure in the in the front side of the pack on purpose. And that, that that's all by design. So you'll see when you pull everything out, the front will cave in and the, and the side pockets will kind of roll to the front. Nice. And that's by design. What we really wanted to do, to do is design the Fanatic, which is a great product for really cold weather conditions, keeps you warm, has wind stopper, but we wanted to make it quieter. And we really took a three-stage approach. One was a lab environment uh, that's using a, what's called a GNA machine that moves uh, sleeves around and lets us manage or look at a different textile package. The other is a lab setting where we basically create real world conditions, cold, quiet, and a gore comfort lab. And the third is then we then use that information uh, to analyze how deer hear. Um, and we partnered with a, a guy named uh, Dr. Carl Miller out of UGA and used a study from uh, Hefner and Hefner about how deer hear. Um, so maybe James can take us through a little bit more about uh, uh, the sounds created on GNA machine. So that first stage, the GNA, that's the Gore Noise Analyzer, it, so it takes a fabric, kind of like a tube of fabric, like say the sleeve of your coat, and it rotates it like this. And it would excite two different modes of noise. One would be kind of where the fabric like folds over itself, and that's the buckling. That occurred around 125 hertz. And then the, the other mode was where the fabric like rubs up against itself or out in the field. This might, it might be that, but it might also be rubbing against the tree. That, that was what we called the rustle. That one was a lot higher frequency noise. That was around 3,000 hertz. And one of the things we know um, from the understanding of what oh, some of the studies that were done with how gear here, that 3,000 hertz is really in their sweet spot where that buckle we think may be out of their sweet spot. So it maybe has to be a little bit louder for them to be able to hear that as well. Mm -hmm. So we really honed in on that sound like rustling. So if you brush against the tree, that interaction noise that you hear is in just inside of the rustle uh, area. So um, ultimately what that GNA machine um, enables us to do is take the textile package and we have the old sleeve and the new sleeve and that was 12 phones um, less than the original Fanatic sleeve. So any, any measure of about five phones we know is significant and we were able to go beyond double that. Um, and then when we took that information, we were able to put it into real world jackets. So every time we change a textile, we don't want to have to build a whole jacket out of it. And that's what the GNA machine allows us to do. So then we, we were able to say, okay, these are the textile packages we want to test. Let's build these in the jackets. And then we were able to go into like a, a, a sound studio and be able to move around and be able to measure the noise that, are, that, that those jackets made. But we weren't able to make that cold. So then the Gore has, or Gore-Tex has a facility, it's called the Comfort Lab. They have a chamber that can lower it down to negative 50 degrees uh, Celsius. We took it down to negative 20 degrees Celsius because that's where the microphones quit working. And, uh, and we're able to go inside and build like a, a semi-anechoic chamber, which is like a, a sound or a whisper room, essentially. Yeah. Go in there, measure the noises in those really cold environments, and then James was able to say, okay, this is what happens. So maybe you want to talk about the six decibel reduction? Sure. So we measured the old Fanatic under those conditions. We, it was actually kind of funny because we had to, we wanted the clothing to be at that negative 20 degrees Celsius. So we had the clothes on racks inside of this climate chamber. And we would walk into the room in our base layers at negative 20 Celsius, put on the clothing and then go into the whisper room. Uh, but we got used to that, I guess. So we go in there, we had a number of different users. 
So, and they would do a number of different movements of what are typical for bow hunting, like drawing your bow. We actually had a chunk of a tree in there, so the person was rub up against it. Um, we'd, so draw a bow, rub against the tree, reach for your range finder. We, we tested all these different movements. And between the old fanatic and the new fanatic, we saw on average, over all those movements and over all those users, a uh, six decibel reduction from the old fanatic to the new fanatic. And that is actually a conservative estimate, and they wanted to just stick with what they could prove scientifically. It, I say conservative because the, the old fanatic was clearly above the background noise levels, which we reduced a lot by creating this whisper. But the new fanatic was basically right at the background, so it probably was, well, it should be lower than that. But we saw, so just a reduction from the old fanatic down to the new fanatic on average of six decibels. And there's something called the inverse square law. So if you take a point source of sound, and as that energy radiates out, it, the energy dissipates. And that's according to the inverse square law. And it, that says that with a doubling of distance, you get a six decibel reduction. So that six decibel average that we saw, you could say that it would take the engagement distance of a deer with an old fanatic down to half that distance with the new fanatic. And the old fanatic is quiet to yeah. begin with, let alone. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I imagine with the, the new lab, the GNA lab, it allows you to test all kinds of different materials relatively quickly to be able to get the material you need. Yeah, we didn't just change one thing. The, the Berber is different. It's actually got better print clarity on it or, because it's not a print. Each thread is actually its own color. Um, the insulation is different. So Ragler and using Primaloft Silver, uh, we found a new one that's called Primaloft Silver High Loft Ultra. Um, and that's a V-lap. So if you look at like a cross section of that, you can see the insulation almost looks like it's doing that in the form of a V lapping over and over again. And what that does is it makes it really supple. Uh, but then what we also found as in addition to the other ben benefits of that high loft, it made it actually two phones quieter than the uh, uh, other insulation we use. Now is it is it also warmer than the old Fanatic? So the new Fanatic actually, uh, we're still in the process of doing some testing, but everything that we have indicating thus far shows that it's uh, definitely uh, on the warmer side than the original one. Um, and then the percentage, we're still going through all of that, but there's a lot of testing that we yeah. have to spend on the body form to be able to get to that. Yeah. Good deal.